Hello, kindred spirits. My name is Bryn, and I'm the owner of Kindred Spirit Steel Drums and Rippled Sound Sculptures, based on the Sunshine Coast in British Columbia, Canada. We're here today to talk about my new double-sided Helios 2.0 tongue pan, but before we get into the instrument, I just want you to notice the tapestries behind me. Now, those were designed and developed by Simon Hyduck, who's an amazing visionary artist. If you'd like to check out more of his stuff, there will be a link down below in the description. All right, so for those who've been following me and know what I've been producing over the last little while, thank you for continuing watching with your energy. And for those who are just getting to know me and connecting with my videos and my instruments, nice to meet you. Um, I hope that you will find these videos informative and our instruments alluring. So the Helios 2.0 tongue pan was an instrument that I designed back in 2018 and it sort of coalesced moved through a lot of different phases until finalizing on the design which I released at the end of 2019 and sort of the beginning of 2020 was when that one really got off its off its feet so here we are in 2020 moving along and this is just a slightly more evolved uh, version of that instrument with some additional features that make them very versatile and they're quite exciting and fun to play just because of that versatility so those other instruments, the Helios 2.0 has a 10 note scale on one side, whereas these instruments have a 9 note scale and a 9 note scale, giving them 18 notes overall. On one side, with our small medallion, you'll have the minor scale. And on the other side, with the sound hole plug, the larger medallion, you will have the major scale. Now, generally when you produce a double-sided instrument or say a hand pan with bottom notes, you want to have complementary notes and complementary scales just because the way that hand pans and steel tongue drums and other melodic steel instruments create sound is that they're a sympathetically resonating um, object instrument, also known as an idiophone. So if you have tones on them that are discordant, it might not sound as nice as, say, a more harmonious instrument. Not all the time. Like, there's some instruments out there that have some really funky incidentals on, say, either side, hand pans and what have you. Um, but generally, we try and do the major, the major with its complementary minor, just because it's easier for people to deal with those notes than something that might be a little bit more obscure. As you can see, um, it's got the same layered technomantic finish as on our other Helios instruments. It's got a nice embossed etching. Uh, the clear coat on it is a sparkly clear coat. And this one actually has, ha happens to have another layer of clear coat, which is actually glow in the dark. So that's a really cool feature, which you can actually order on all of our instruments now. You can play them at night as long as they're charged up. They'll have a very interesting glow. Depending on the base coat and the overall color of the instrument, um, if it's darker, like this one might be, the glow is a little bit softer, where if it's just on our straight white base coat, the glow is quite strong. So just need to think about that when ordering those particular instruments, but you can always contact us for more information. So again, back to this instrument. On this side, which is the minor side, we have a nine note Dorian mode, a scale that we call Renaissance very deep and expressive. And on the other side, we have a scale that we call Arbutus, other makers call Big Bear. I've heard Ursa Major. Um, technically, it might be a dominant pentatonic. It's technically in B flat major, but because it has the root of F, it's a little bit strange, but it works very well with this other particular scale. Get some nice layered, beautiful overtones. So as you can see, the instrument's got a nice rubber rim, which makes it a little bit more easy to hold on to. It's not so slippery. Um, some makers don't put on rubber rings on their tongue pans. You know, that's a sort of a maker's, maker's choice. I like to have the instruments be as easy to handle and least amount of upkeep as possible, which is why we coat them um, with powder coat, uh, clear coats and other things, just to make sure there's no upkeep. I would highly recommend that if anyone out there is listening and going to buy any particular melodic steel instrument that you do not buy anything that is not coded. Um, in this day and age in the industry, there's no reason not to get a hand pan, tongue pan, or tongue drum that has some type of coating, whether that's powder coat, 
lacquer or it's nitrided or carburized, some sort of surface finishing because or else you're just going to run into so many problems with rust and you'll feel good when you first get the instrument but then as you move through and it starts to become a little bit of a rust explosion your happiness will not go higher and you'll lose your joy as Marie Kondo would say so find a way to spark joy and get an instrument with a coating because it'll just make life so much easier so on either side You'll see here there's a pickup jack <clears throat> for plugging in and another pickup jack for plugging in. These instruments are mirrored, so it's really easy to flip it over. Boom, boom, boom. It's the same orientation, so it's really easy to play with and to move through your whatever performance or personal um, soundscape you're creating. So we're going to plug in for a bit. We'll start with the minor side here. So there's a dueling pickup system inside, so grab your uh, pickup jack, amplifier plug-in, the cord, the thing that's going to make it make sound, and make sure your amplifier is off because as you click it in, if it's on it'll sort of crack and hurt your ears. There we go. So now we turn on our amplifier and we are ready to start jamming away on this thing. satisfying wompiness that other instruments and other tongue pans might have because the metal hasn't been tempered properly. And due to the properties of this particular steel alloy that we use, it gets very hard. It's kind of like making a knife that you can play musically, which is it's interesting. It adds an extra life to the instrument to have it forged and produced. And I hammer every note for sustain, for clarity just to get the best tonality out of the steel. Now again, so that's the minor side, and now you're like, oh, I want to flip over to the major side. So you turn off your amp, flip out the cord, adjust the instrument, plug in, and boom, away you go on the major side. Now as I mentioned, this is the Big Bear Arbutus Dominant Pentatonic it's very familiar, very warm. It's like a homecoming. Maybe a nice sunny morning. Drinking some tea. Seeing some really big puppy clouds drifting up through the sky. Nice bluebird, clear, clear sky. Here it would be June when the Arbut um, the Arbutus trees are really but also the alder trees. You can see the soft morning light percolating down through their leaves and they're this amazing emerald green. And you can smell all the flowers that have come. It's finally warm. Summer's on the way, but right now there's been lots of rain. sun goes down and the night's coming on and you're getting a little bit more pensive and thoughtful and curious what's gonna happen where's my night gonna go and you start thinking about the different processes you've been through the different healing journeys and layers that you've moved through up in your psyche, in your mind, start dropping in deep, feeling the cool night air. And the cool night air is bringing smells of the sea and the night flowers. And you hear a night hawk out in the distance, the night birds, and know that 
this in their domain. And though it's night, and there can be scary things here, night birds and other creatures thrive in the dark. And that's their world. And the light that we find so warming and so comforting is their darkness. is coming up on the horizon and it's it's 5 a.m and the night birds have gone to sleep but now it's the morning birds the starlings the encore to the night birds and the start of the new chapter Aside from that little philosophical interlude, that's the versatility that these instruments have with their sound. You can jump back and forth, and it's quite amazing. Now they also come with these funky little felted magnetic rubber feet that I've produced. So you can stick those on either side, put them down onto a table or say the floor if you're playing at a yoga studio, the stage perhaps and be able to continue playing the instrument. Now you might ask why you want rubber feet and not a pillow or not some other sort of soft thing for these instruments to sit on. And the thing about the double-sided instruments is that when they're sitting on something, you want all the tongues from the top and the bottom to be able to interact and move freely. Because what'll happen is you'll get these beautiful layered sound profiles It'll sort of ping pong between the different notes and the different tongues and move and create an ethereal flowing um, emanating sound and it's very beautiful and that's where I think these instruments really come alive so again having the magnetic feet with them adds that extra layer of versatility that I think is very important you can uh, order cases with these. They come with mallets and a booklet. They have a lifetime guarantee. They're pretty much bulletproof. Um, I work really hard to make sure that the products I produce are not only exquisite acoustically and aesthetically, but they're also very strong. And you don't have to worry about them. There's no upkeep. They're good to go. So yeah, if you'd like to get more information on these instruments, you can check the link below. It'll take you to the website. And if you have any questions, you can contact me directly. Again, my name is Bryn, and this is Kindred Spirit Drums and Ripple Sound Sculptures, and this is the new double-sided Helios Tongue Pan. Thank you very much.